And uh, joining us today on the Book Talk segment of the show, great to welcome author who has written uh, many books on the, uh, on the, I guess, the art of love and uh, and how to find it. Her latest was called How to Create Chemistry with Anyone, 75 Ways to Spark It Fast and Make It Last. We're joined today by uh, Lil Loundis uh, by telephone. Uh, unfortunately, Lil, uh, you're up in New York. You should be down here in Sarasota. We were just chatting before we went on. You're down here part of the year, but uh, you kind of missed, uh, missed getting out in time. Kind of miss. I sure did, and I, I can't wait to get back. I'm on there. Uh, go in a couple of weeks. I'll be there. Are, are you a, a six and six person for the most part? A a six months here, six months New York kind of uh, Yeah, know? pretty much. I started out being a, a snowbird, a bad bird to Sarasota. No, not, not to me. <laughs> okay, well, I started out being a snowbird and becoming more of a bird than snow, so <laughs> I'm down there a lot. It's, uh, as you know, uh, Sarasota, uh, I always thought, uh, being from New York myself, it, it has a lot of New York's uh, attributes down here, doesn't it? I mean, on a smaller scale, obviously, but... A lot of culture. Yeah, there's art, a lot of New England, and many New England people um, are there, as you well know. And it's 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 lovely because Sarasota is sophisticated. as has Van Weasel, has a lot of cultural things, and yet still it has a wonderful warmth and, and country feeling to it to a certain extent. It really does, yeah. A great, great uh, uh, mix of people, too, from different parts of the country, different parts of the world, too. And uh, that kind of ties into your book a little bit. Uh, there's, there's a great chemistry down here. So let's, let's talk about this book, How to Create That Chemistry. Uh, you've written several books on, on the topic, and I guess you could write hundreds of books on it, never quite get it all in, but you're doing a great job at least getting some good information out there and, and how to find the right person. Thanks, Doug. Well, my first book, How to Make Someone Fall in Love with You, was based on um, sociological studies at the time. But in the past 10 years, there have been a tremendous amount of um, neurological studies and discovering exactly what love is. And more importantly to me, uh, while writing this book, I discovered ways to bring love back. Not the mad, passionate, uh, obsessive, want to be with you every minute uh, type of love, which actually neuroscientists uh, dis um, describe as a you know, psychopathological condition, but to bring a different chemical, a different base love into a long-term relationship. Is it strictly chemical that, that kind of fires it up, and then obviously you know, the emotion and all that kicks in later, or is there more to it than that? Interesting question. It's a case of which comes first, the chicken or the egg. Mm -hmm. um, the emotions, of course, create chemicals to rush through your brain, and um, chemicals cause the emotions. So, yes, it's a, a two-part process. The first is primarily a chemical called uh, dopamine, and mixed with testosterone and with estrogen, it can be a pretty powerful thing. In fact, it can blind you to the faults of your potential partner. Um, physically, from the limbic system, from a part of the brain called the amygdala, uh, the signals don't really get clearly to the, the frontal cortex. It's called the thinking part of your brain. So, in other words, you're all screwed up at first. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to wait to see if the other kind of love is going to set in before bringing a child into the world or, or um, permanentizing the relationship through marriage. Well, that kind of explains, uh, in some way, obviously on the negative side, why... You see some of these couples stay together when you know, one treats the other or, you know, unfortunately beats the other at times. I guess that's the chemical that blinds one side from doing something about it, right? Is, is that correct? Exactly, that? exactly. Well, the, the main problem is being so blinded by that chemical at first uh, that you get into a relationship that really is not healthy for you. Um, Mother Nature actually has a lot to do with sparking one's chemistry for another person, and it has to do with someone's immune system, according to Mother Nature, being compatible with the other's immune system so that they could produce the healthiest infant. Because, of course, Mother Nature's um, role is to, is to propagate the species. Right, yeah. And uh, also, because we're blinded to that, um, as I said, we don't really see the other person's faults, and we get into the relationship, and we don't... The tragedy is that when people feel that dopamine going down, that testosterone, dopamine, estrogen blending, uh, they feel, tragically enough, that love is dying. And in a way, it's almost the opposite, because in chemistry, the, the testosterone mitigates against the, the um, um, oxytocin 
which is the, the bonding chemical. Mm -hmm. So when you really start to love, it can drive down the testosterone or drive down the sex. And couples don't often wait to see it through. They just jump into divorce courts or marriage counseling and, no, just hang in there and really, it's got true love, but that's what it is, can set in. They give up too early. They give up too early, and they don't do, they don't do enough of the techniques to bring the oxytocin, and I'm going to just speak primarily, chemically speaking, during, during this um, discussion, because that's, that's what the book is about. There are ways to bring back the oxytocin, and also ways to bring back the dopamine, as I said, not to the extent that it is where you want to have sex all the time, um, but if you do exciting things together, um, maybe wonderful concerts or great theater or even something scary like a scary movie, it gets that dopamine gushing through the brain and through transference, we transfer that feeling of excitement over to our partner. Uh, there are ways to engender oxytocin. One of the most important ones is, is touch, non-sexual touch. Um, residents of nursing homes uh, live longer and are a lot happier if they have physical touch with their caregivers or with other people. Uh, babies grow up healthier in orphanage if they've been brought up with touch, human touch. So mm. one thing when I'm in Sarasota, I just love to see elder couples holding hands. Right. <laughs> Oh, it's such a healthy thing. And doing things together, I um, ride bicycle a lot on the on the trail there, and I see older couples riding along together, and, oh, gosh, they're doing just the right thing. You de de dedicate a whole chapter in the book uh, about chemistry at first sight. Uh, uh, I guess in a sense that really the chemical, how does the chemical action take place if you, know, if you just see somebody right away? You really can't fall in love at first sight, can you? Okay. Um, yes, you can, in a sense. Um, uh, human beings have developed the incredible ability, just as a DNA expert can tell so much about a person from looking at a sliver of their toenail. We have the uncanny ability to, to tell about a person whether they would um, fulfill our extensive laundry list of needs. Um, and often our needs are not really what is going to make for, for long-term happiness. Um, for instance, if a woman had, heaven forbid, been a, used as a child, she might see an abusive man, and because it's a familiar, a familiar uh, pathology, she might be drawn to that particular man. So it's not healthy for the long run, but yes, there are uh, tremendous sexual sparks going on between these people. Men are always uh, thought to be much more visual, and, and women, I guess, more uh, with the, the audio, right? As far as as far as the, what they're yeah, the yeah. from, is that right? Yes, or? well, we we are much more sensitive to audio. However, if um, a, a woman is actually much more particular than a man, and a woman, a man can be say out of a hundred women be attracted to. 40 of them if they're, in, they're fairly attractive in his age range and da da da. Whereas a woman, a man will be lucky if she's attracted to four or five of them mm. because we look for the things that we really want in life. We want perhaps character, sense of humor, um, intelligence, and we find lines of this in a man's face, and that's what we're attracted to, whatever we're looking for. And a man, understandably, primarily at first, is looking for sex. And nothing wrong with it. That's Mother Nature's plan. He has ten times more testosterone. Yeah, it was a, it's kind of a strange plan, though. It doesn't always fit together. <laughs> well, it doesn't fit together for our happiness, Doug. It does fit together for um, propagation of the species. Uh, you know, having having more the more the merrier, Mother Nature says. <laughs> and she's not really interested in keeping a long-term relationship together because it perhaps means less little earthlings for her Earth. That's true, yeah. So, so two, two sides of it you have, you have to look at. Let's talk a little bit, uh, Leo, a little bit about, uh, obviously, you see all these dating shows on TV now and people going online to hopefully find somebody. Does that kind of mm -hmm. go against this whole chemistry thing, or what, what do you make of that whole uh, whole situation? Well, when people meet, they, they very often just, you know discover that the real chemistry is not there. However, there are ways in the book to create chemistry online now. It's a different kind of chemistry, of course, but there have been studies um, that if a woman wears red in her profile picture, uh, she is contacted a lot more. Yeah. 
Um, and also, if a man in the background, a man should be very careful about the background of this picture. I mean, if he has a motorcycle in the background, or a truck, or a Subaru, or a Mercedes, or if he's in a beautiful home in the background, or in some slum in the background, women will judge the man to a great extent on what's in the background, because we women have that evolutionarily based quality to sort of see ourselves in the situation of uh, she's saying, do I want to ride in that? Do I want to live in that? So a man should pay great attention to the background. And when writing the first letter, don't concentrate on I, I, I like you're advertising yourself. Concentrate on her. Um, say, I sensed your gentleness or I sensed your intelligence coming through what you wrote in your profile. Yeah, that's a good way. I was wondering what, what, what people can write. I've looked at them, and you're never quite sure what to write on those things for somebody without sounding phony. So that's a good way to put it. I, didn't, I never thought Yeah, that. write about the other person. Don't write about yourself. They'll, they'll discover that if, as long as... What do they want to read about most, themselves or you? Right, <laughs> you know, well, the book is filled with uh, great information. We just touched on uh, a brief amount today. It's called How to Create Chemistry with Anyone, 75 Ways to Spark It Fast and Make It Last. Now, Lula, people can, you got a website can, yeah, where they can get the book. Oh, yeah. It's um, People Magnet, one word, peoplemagnet.com. Great. You're going to be coming back down here hopefully soon, get out of the cold weather up in New York. Oh, you brought a smile on my face. I will be there a ASAP. Great. Leo, well, it's a pleasure to talk to you for a few minutes, and uh, hopefully one of these days we'll maybe do the next one in person. Uh, as we know you're down in, in the area now. It should be fun. That would be lovely. Great. Thanks, Thanks for joining us.